energy and dowsing. Some of the main concepts I'm going to talk about are written here, and I'll come back to this slide at the end of the presentation in case you want to review them. I also want to point out Feng Shui and Vashtu. Some, that's Chinese method of arranging objects to allow energy to flow, and Vashtu is like the Indian version of that. There are two topics that link to this that you may want to look into further. Okay, so what are ley lines? Alfred Watkins wrote about them first in a book from the 1920s called The Old Straight Track. He said they were just lines, like dot to dot, joining significant, prominent landmarks um, or sacred spaces, sacred sites, sacred buildings in the UK landscape. So he lived from 1855 to 1935. He didn't give the ley lines any spiritual significance, but archaeologists didn't accept his ideas. They said there are so many ancient features um, in the landscape that alignments are very likely, it's just joining dots between different places. They also said that some of the structures he was joining dots between were built at different times, so it discredited his argument. Um, the word lay is Old English for a cleared space. So moving forwards to 1969, John Michelle wrote The View Over Atlantis, and he also launched a magazine called Lay Hunter. So this revived Watkins' ideas about ley lines, but with a more supernatural focus. He did see them as energy lines that affected humans, and he also related them to um, dragon paths, which is a Chinese belief, kind of like meridians of the earth. So um, John Michel led this movement referred to as the Earth Mysteries movement, and they would douse for ley lines using pendulum or copper rods. So more about them later. Um, this also brings me to the idea of an energy vortex. It's believed that it's a point of strong earth energy where ley lines cross, and they believed that ancient societies recognised ley lines and built structures like Stonehenge on them. Um, some people believed that ley lines guided alien spacecraft. So moving forward again to the 1990s, um, the ley hunter community dissipated after a lot of criticism, and the editor of that magazine actually said that the idea of lays was dead. So in the pictures here, these are some ley lines from this time, the Michael line running through lots of places with Michael in the title. This is another Michael line running through the UK um, through several sacred sites. And this is one from Sussex going through the Long Man of Wilmington, which is a carving of a man um, on a chalk hilltop. Okay, so that's ley lines. Um, oh yeah, I just, I found two maps of ley lines. I don't know who did them or how accurate they are and they're both different, but it's interesting to see where they put lines, where they pass through and where they intersect. There's also this one, which is completely different. Um, the Becca Hagen's uh, energy grid system from 1983. Okay. So moving on to earth energy, um, ley lines became unfashionable, but that belief evolved into the idea of energy lines, and that has persisted with the idea of earth energy. Um, in the 1980s, Hamish Miller was a geomancer, so someone who douses for energy, who did a lot of work in this area. And he's passed away now, but one of his students was Tim Walter, and he has a really good YouTube channel. So he does geomancy and house energy clearing and healing. And he talks about in some videos and goes into way more detail than I am here about dowsing, earth energy, house energy, house clearing and house healing. He also talks about geopathic stress. So that's caused by bad or distorted earth energy under buildings and how it affects the inhabitants. This can be from underground water, um, sewers, tunnels, utility lines, cables, fault lines, that kind of thing. Um, 
Yeah. So he says about earth energy that they're lines of energy and they can be different sizes and they're actually they're hard to avoid. You know, it's hard to avoid building a house on one because they're everywhere. But some are large like veins and arteries and some are small like pillories and they weave across the landscape and interact with our energy field, our aura. Okay, then on to dowsing. So dowsing is seeking something with the help of an object and the two objects normally used are rods and pendulums. So it's a way of seeing earth energy. In ancient societies in China, Egypt and in Rome, they would use dowsing to ask divine entities about crops. And in the Middle Ages, rods were used to find water and metals underground and also early European doctors would use dowsing to locate weak areas in the body. So you can use rods like this. These are copper ones um, and they rotate in these little handles and the traditional stick is from the hazel tree. Hazel sticks can be carved. Also you can just use a wire coat hanger. I tried this for the first time when I was researching for this video and it did work. So I just straightened out a wire coat hanger, managed to snap it in half and had two pieces the same size and folded them into this shape um, like that. And um, it works. So you set them pointing in front of you. So that's neutral and just ask simple yes or no questions. And if they cross in front of you, one or both, that's a yes. And if they point out to the side one or both that's a no so I found on some questions the right one or the left one would move first or be the only one to move I also found a delay um, of about 10 to 20 seconds between asking the question and getting a response it could be the material I was using maybe the copper is a better conductor but it was almost like it was asking thinking about the question before it responded. So be patient and just experiment. I did find sometimes too, the right or the left one would move for different questions. And I did wonder if you could just do it with one um, rod, or maybe if it was more of a left or right brain question, if you know the corresponding side moved. So it's really interesting to experiment with them. Then we've got pendulums. So pendulums come in lots of different materials. You can get crystal, stone, um, copper, but it really doesn't matter. Any object hung off some sort of string, some people use a ring on string, um, will work. So when you're dousing with a pendulum, don't have your legs crossed. It interferes with the signals in your body. So uncross your legs and just ask the pendulum to show you the four possible answers. Yes, no, maybe, or I can't say. I normally go back and forth in front of me for yes, left to right for no, clockwise for maybe, and anti-clockwise for I can't say. But um, sometimes it's different. So always establish that at the start of a reading. Another word of advice, if you are thinking of dowsing about another person, always ask permission of their higher self first. So ask their higher self if you have permission. And if it says no, then don't proceed any further. It's just basic good manners. And how does dowsing work? So you're not channeling some sort of entity. You're accessing your own intuition. Um, your subconscious knows and sees everything and it's influencing you to make these imperceptible movements in your fingers and hands that the pendulum reacts to so that is how it works okay so that's all about earth energy um moving on they're the main concepts i wanted to talk about but the rest of the presentation is just me talking about some other um kind of random concepts that i found interesting and wanted to share with you so stay tuned if you're interested. Okay, um, be aware earth energy can be light or dark. It's not all just this sacred earth energy that's positive. So there's the idea that um, these lines of earth energy can get um, polluted. Maybe they flow under sewage or rubbish or a cemetery and need clearing. 
so yeah be aware not all earth energy is positive um it's sort of disputed because they say the ancient people built important sacred sites on ley lines but then i've heard not to build a uh building on an energy line but according to tim walter because these lines are everywhere it's pretty unavoidable so it's not an energy to fear but something to work with okay like we clear our own energy and we clear crystals we can do that with earth energy as well okay now i found some information about canberra a site i came across when i was researching this australian and this is some information i didn't know so canberra the capital city was a city designed and built on energy lines and occult principles canberra is halfway between sydney and melbourne and it was always you you know you're told at school in australia that um, they built it halfway between the two big cities because they couldn't agree going forwards which city would be the capital um, and this website said that that was nonsense that um, there was this competition in 1911 to design a new capital city and that was won by Walter Burley Griffin who was an American architect and he was apparently an expert in esoteric matters and designed Canberra on ley lines and occult principles that's all I could find out but I, you often see referrals to this pyramid which is old parliament house this is Lake Burley Griffin mountains behind and this kind of line which may be a line of energy running down here so that was very interesting it also said that Canberra and the southeast coast of Australia are UFO hotspots um, I mean it all sounded all right to me I do agree with this quote from Walter Burley Griffin he said architecture should be the logical outgrowth of the environment in which the building is located maybe he just had a really good sense of the land and the earth energies and the city complemented it like that's how feng shui would be used um who knows okay um tim walter also talks about the power center of a home so he says in every home or building there's a power center and it's usually where people's attention is focused so kitchen living room in front of the television and if like in a stone circle, it would be the center of a stone circle. So he says you can douse with rods or pendulum for this power center. And when you find it, send love and compassion and positive energy into the space. And that will help to heal the earth energy there and within the home. And it kind of comes out from that power center along energy lines to the rest of the home. So you might like to try that last thing i want to talk about is clapham woods so i hadn't heard of this either it's um it links into the idea of earth energy there's this wood here it is on the map so that's in west sussex in southern england um since the 1960s it's been seen as a mysterious place so there's been four human deaths there this is really in the news i think the 70s and the 80s lots of dog deaths, um, UFO sightings, abnormal radiation readings, and allegations that a cult used it for rituals. So perhaps tapping into earth energy there. Um, then one article I read said that after the big storm of 1987, um, had a huge impact and destroyed a lot of the trees in the wood, um, that activity moved on. Other people still believe it's a place of mysterious forces. So there you go, Clapham Wood. Okay, everyone, let me just click back to those keywords. So they're the main concepts I've talked about. Feng Shui and Vashtu, you may want to look further into. Feng Shui, I um, find useful, especially the idea of dividing a home or a room into the nine different areas. And each area has colors and shapes and objects that strengthen the energy in that area. Um, a lot of it's just common sense as well. Vashtu, now I heard a really good interview with Yasmin Bolin, the astrologer about Vashtu. If I can find that, I'll put it in the description. So it's the ancient Indian science of architecture in harmony with elements, nature and energy to make a harmonious place to live. One thing I do remember from that interview is not to sleep with your head facing north, northeast or northwest, because it's a really stimulating direction. But it's a good energy to face um, for doing work. 
So um, hope you found that interesting and I hope you enjoy any dowsing that you do. Thanks for listening, everyone. Bye-bye.